All right, everybody, Steve the Car Guy, Chevrolet HHR GM Equitech 2.2 liter four cylinder 160K on it. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be replacing the valve cover gasket on this car. And if you can see in here, there's a ton of oil in the back. It's basically all over everything from the valve cover all the way down to the block, all the way onto the transmission, all the way onto the CV axle and the pulleys and everything else, and even into the suspension and the cross member beams and stuff. And then when you're sitting at a light, you can actually uh, smell the oil burning and you can see some smoke because it's dripping out and it's hitting on the exhaust manifold. So this has been going on like this for a while. Like I said, the car's got 160K on it, the original OEM factory. Uh, set up over here with the uh, valve cover gasket so definitely been a lot of oil I've been noticing here but the thing that's really flipped it for me is you see the driveway right there everywhere you park it it leaks oil and I went underneath the car and I did see the oil on the suspension components underneath so yeah we're gonna go ahead and do this I've shown you guys how to take the how to take this um, cover off here for the air filter and stuff we did a previous video on how to replace the air filter and we also did a previous video showing you guys how to do the spark plugs in this particular vehicle we did that at about 120,000 miles that was about three years ago or so so we're gonna go get to it I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this upper intake here that houses the air filter and then we'll be back and it's basically about eight bolts eight or ten bolts here I think to go ahead and pull this off of here and once we go ahead and we get that done then we'll be able to go ahead and get the problem fixed and then we'll show you guys how to clean everything up as well uh, again 160,000 miles on this car so pretty all right guys so part two of this video we've gone ahead and taken off the air filter air cleaner box nothing too complicated so now we're going to get busy on the valve cover gasket this is a support piece in the back for the air cleaner assembly there's just one bolt along the back I probably will take it out of there just to make it easier and then we've got this four spark plugs here in the middle and the gasket set which I'll show you guys also has some grommet the grommets in here and it also has the uh, little gasket part here for the spark plug so we'll go ahead and do those we did replace these spark plugs at about 120,000 miles the car's got 160 on it now so as you can see there's one two three four and then we have uh, possibly at least one maybe two three in there and then obviously the same in the back I think I counted the number of grommets that it came with for the hold the screws and I think I came up with like 14 or something like that so we'll go ahead and grab that gasket set and we'll take a look at that and I'll bring that into the video as well guys um, shouldn't be too horrible a job it is only the valve cover gasket but you do have this fuel rail right here and there is a screw holding this fuel rail and as you can see right over here so I'm gonna... all right guys so we've got the upper air filter compartment taken off and this is what the valve cover gasket is going to look like and we've got a bag of grommets in here and that's going to be for the screws and such so according to what I counted I counted about 14 in there I don't necessarily see if I see 14 screws at this point but it doesn't matter because that's how many they have so this is basically how the gasket's going to lay out guys we're going to wind up taking off this um, <clears throat> valve cover gasket here up on top and then it's also got the gaskets for you have the spark plugs and, and such so it'll be interesting I guess now that we look at it we see this right here with this so yeah if you include those that's gonna be four right there so that'll be the four grommets so that's four and then ten going around because I see in the back right there where it hooks up and then that's the one where it goes on the side so hopefully this won't be too big a job guys and I'm gonna wear my GoPro and moving forward with this video all right guys so it's 10 millimeter socket we got to do is I've already started loosening up these bolts here there's basically like four in the front four in the back is eight I'm counting nine ten eleven I'm counting eleven this thing seemed to only have fourteen if you go eleven plus four you get in fifteen so I'm not sure how that's gonna work out but we already showed you the picture in the video of the, of the uh, gasket how it sets up so we know we got to get these spark plugs out of here so like that said guys it's just a ten millimeter loosening up you have the spark plug inside here and this is the coil you know these engines all modern engines pretty much have coil unplug designs right they're not using like those spark plug wires and distributors and distributor caps like you did back in the 80s and even into the early 2000s you know with the, some of the GM V6s they would have the uh, spark plugs and all that and the wires so anyway so we're pulling this off of here 10 millimeter socket and then we're gonna get these out of here it is a beautiful day here in Chicago guys I could do this outside and then we'd have more light 
but no in Chicago it might rain in freaking 10 minutes or snow or do something weird who knows so then this is the spark plug boot that has the coil on it and then the spark plug is down in there I'm guessing I'm gonna have to pull the spark plug out yeah because the spark plug is, gonna, is in there so we're gonna have to go in there and get these spark plugs out as well to lift this valve cover gasket but I'm not 100% sure on that I don't I don't think so guys <clears throat> I'm looking at this and I think that's where they, that's where those rubber gaskets are going to come in right over here, the little round gasket that goes right over here. So yeah, this is going to go right here, guys, inside, and that's going to be where that is. So I don't think I'm going to have to pull the spark plugs up because I don't think that we take manifold is going to go all the way down into that. I think it's going to end right at this point. So we're going to get all the bolts off, and then we're going to see what's the deal. All right, guys. So what we're doing is we're taking the 10 millimeter. It's a 3 8 inch socket with 10 millimeter with an extender and we're just pulling these bolts off of here so you can see I've got them. I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then the 4 in the middle are 15 and we don't see anything over in here so this one's just kind of clip in place. This one here, this is for the fuel rail guys. You see this is fuel rail, this is a Schrader valve, you get your fuel injectors down here. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and just take this screw off here to get this out of here so we can lift this up. But again, it's everything's 10 millimeters um, with the extension here. And <clears throat> it's got, the kit has, the kit comes with these grommets here. And these grommets are gonna be where you're gonna put it in here for the various screws. Now one's in the front. There really isn't that much leakage. As you can see, it's clean. It's in the back where it's leaking. Like I previously explained to you guys, these engines kind of go down a little bit because they have to go, that's the way the car goes. So whenever there's a leak, it always drips down that way and it's dripping onto the exhaust manifold and all that fun stuff. And then this other one here, this is where you pull the engine out over here. They use, this is a, you know, when you have an engine, you go ahead and you take it from one here in the front and this is how this is how they wind up actually picking these engines up out of these cars. They take the big machines and they go, we need to get the engine out of here. So I might have to remove this. And that's just another, those actually look bigger than 10 millimeters. Those may, those may be 12 meter, middle, millimeter bolts right over there because when I go to take this manifold out, this may get in the way, especially if this doesn't have any screws on this side and you want to hook it in place. So again, guys, this is where we're in, this, in the first steps here. We're just taking it apart. Once we go ahead and get that taken apart, then we're going to go ahead and see if we need to take these screws all the way out. I think we're going to have some fun trying to pry this thing off of here at 160,000 miles. So we may have to get a screwdriver here and pry this out here to go ahead and get this thing. It's going to be kind of a mess. And then you can see, guys, you see right inside right there, <clears throat> these are where the spark plugs are. So the spark plugs go inside, and that's where it goes into the head. And you can see the oil right there. So basically, yeah, these this part here that they give you, these rubber gaskets they give you that I showed you guys earlier, definitely going to have to replace those too. That's part of the reason I'm doing this myself, guys, because the mechanic tells me how much he's going to charge and what needs to be done. And I know they buy the kit, but they don't always do what they say. They'll go ahead and replace the you know the valve cover gasket but then they won't place the gaskets on the inside here and they won't replace the grommets and then you'll have some leaks and a couple years later they'll come back to them and they'll charge you for a whole nother job you know that's how they do things sometimes because you can tell right now for sure 100 percent it's leaking so at least this way i know it's going to get done right and it's going to get done 100 percent and i'm making a video showing you guys how to do it because this is something you guys can do and save yourselves a couple all right guys so continuing this project as you can see we've got the bolts loosened over here in the back so we got all of these bolts and I went and I took off the uh, piece that they used to pull the engine off and I also disconnected this little harness here holding for the fuel rail so it looks like we pretty much have everything you can see this is the old gasket like I told you before the whole impetus for all this guys when you see the oil leaking from up here that's that's the exhaust manifold and that's going down to the exhaust what happens you're sitting at a light literally the oil is dripping out of the of the valve covers obviously because that's where the valves are going everything's moving in zillion miles an hour and oil is flying everywhere and it's literally dripping down into the exhaust manifold and you're getting the smoke and then you're getting you see all the oil guys see all this oil oh my god it's everywhere so this has been going on for 20 30 thousand miles i'm sure and uh, it's leaking out over it getting the suspension parts dripping in my garage everywhere dripping in my driveway dripping in the street so we've gone ahead and decided this is what we have to do and so to that end we've got the spark plug everything taken off so now we're gonna have to do guys is we're gonna have to get in here you can see this is where the gasket is see that so this is the gasket so we are gonna have to get underneath the gasket here and pry this up this is the part that I'm not so excited about because this thing's been on here for 160,000 miles we're in 2024 and it's a 2008 been here for a long time the bolts actually themselves were not that difficult to loosen up and not never near as hard as I thought and they seem to just go ahead and stay right here within this uh, metal housing part right here so when we pop this out we're going to pop this out we're going to wind up putting these new grommets in that we have over here and we showed you guys 
the gasket that we have, Felpro gasket. It's like 40 bucks over at uh, 46 bucks with tax, but I got a little coupon in advance, so I got it for like 39 bucks. And um, so that's what we're gonna do next, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and stop filling this and get my assistant, and we can get this pried open, and maybe I'll come back with a video on that part. 100 bucks on labor. All right, guys. So we went ahead and we used our 10 millimeter. We got all these bolts out, and I basically just took this screwdriver and I kind of went over here at first and it wasn't moving. So I went right over to here to this corner. And see, this is the part where you pull it up with the engine. So I figured that was a good play. I didn't want to go over here with the fuel rail and somehow damage the fuel rail. So I went here and just boom, there we go. That's the valve cover here. So the key with the valve cover is just to figure out which one of these screws is holding you back. Now we've got this off and there we go, guys. Check it out. So this is the this is the inside of the engine. That's going to be that gasket, that blue gasket we're going to place. We're going to spray and we're going to clean all this oil. Basically, got 160,000 miles of gunk and crap. See, guys, this is the old gasket. Look at that. See, that's why it was leaking right there, guys. That's the crack that went ahead and was causing it to leak in the back. Look at it. Just totally disintegrated my hand. That's the new gasket right over there, guys. You can see it. That's all going to go right inside over here. So let's take a look at the valve train of an engine in case none of you guys have ever seen this. This is your timing chain. This is a 2.2 liter Ecotec double overhead cam so you got four valves per cylinder so you got two intake valves and you got two exhaust valves i'm not sure i would assume that this would be the intake side because that's where the throttle body is so these would be the intake valves and this is the exhaust valves so that's one cam that's the second cam these are your spark plugs that go down inside the head over here and this is your timing chain over here and that all runs off the belt and belt driven and everything a uh, fairly simple setup actually guys and that's all your bolts here we're not going to deal with any of this stuff but you can just just give you guys a little setup it's, it's kind of kind of neat to do you guys can we can actually you can actually start this car and run it without the top on here and then you would see all the stuff all the there are the parts flying around there's some videos out there on youtube showing it to that guys so anyway guys that's what we got here so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to clean up inside the spark plug things here with this there was some oil kind of leaking in here because you know those, those that part of the gasket was bad too so we're just going to clean some things up here a little bit don't see any really abnormal wears but i will go ahead and wipe down some of this stuff here while you have a chance right guys while you have a chance and it's open you might as well you see guys that's the lobe see right there that's the that's the lobes for the camshafts right there you can see and that's the valve springs and then the valves are in there the difference with these type of overhead valve engines as opposed to in block cam engines is there's no push rods so there's no push rods so you don't have to deal with that and uh, really there's no lifters either right because you just have the lobes of the cams hitting the, uh, the rocker arms and then the rocker arms are hitting the valves and then these go up and down, up and down. So you don't have any push rods, you don't have any lifters, totally different than an interference engine. This is non-interference engine. So if one, if one of these cams were to break, you wouldn't lose your whole engine. We had a 90, we had a 96 Chevy Beretta one time, guys, that the in-block cam snapped in the middle and the mechanic took this took one of the valve cover gaskets off in the front and you could see two of, the, two of them were and the other one just wasn't even working. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching this part, and we're going to go ahead and clean everything up. Over here, you see all this gunk, guys, all this crap. We're going to go ahead and manually clean everything up. We're going to put the new gasket inside there, put the new grommets inside here, and put the new... And, yeah, this thing, look. See, guys, this is what was happening. And this was actually this is actually the back of the gasket. This is the back where it's going to the engine. because I pulled this part off the front. This is a PCB thing from the front. So, so yeah, see the, see, the front was okay, but look, see, this is what happened, guys. So, this thing just dried up after 160,000 miles, and the oil was leaking was just coming out of here and causing a big mess and i've been adding a lot of oil to this to this car guys so that's another thing to think about guys if you have a car that you're adding a lot of oil to you could be consuming oil because you could be burning oil you could be losing compression but you could also have a leak at this point the leak forced my hand because now the leak's all over the car and it's burning when i'm sitting still and it's all in the exhaust exhaust manifold and you can see over there it was making a mess over there too anyway guys so we're going to go ahead and, and uh get busy replacing this gasket and cleaning this thing up and all right guys so like we said before we got everything off. We're going to go ahead and clean things. You don't want to put the gasket on with everything being dirty because then you're liable to have not a perfect seal. And we don't want to go through this crap again, even though this really is not that big a deal of a job, guys. So we're just going through, you see? Just go here. Get this nice and clean around the edges here where the new gasket is going to be. Same thing over here by where the screws are. Get all this clean. Just get, it clean it. get everything as clean as you possibly can, guys, around this edge here when you put the gasket. So that way it's going to be a nice good seal. Because if you don't, and then you have problems, then you're going to have to go back and do this again. And, you know, not that I don't mind doing this stuff, but i got better things to do all the time, right? So, but we're making this video, so this is good. So just going around. So you guys clean, see how nice it gets clean? Just cleaning all that up around the edges here. Getting all nice and clean. All in here where the uh, spark plug gasket setup is going to go in as well. And then probably what I'll do is before I put the everything back together, I'm going to go back here. And we're going to try to clean up everything in the back here as much as possible. I'm going to mention to you guys, see how it was all 
it was all dripping down. It was literally dripping down at the exhaust manifold. You're sitting at a light and it was all smoking up. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And the car was down more, the car was down like a quart of oil. So it was down by a quart of oil because um, the last time I checked, it was only down by about a, quart, a third of a quart. So it's all just leaking out the top over here. Oh, and that's another thing, guys. Check these, check these valves, check these things right here. You see this, you see this, guys, how this just moved? Oh, look, see that? They're loose. Yeah, guys. So check these. Check all, this is basic engine maintenance. See that? Look at that. Oh, that's not good, guys. That's your cam. That holds your cam in place. So yeah, go ahead and double. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's why we're doing this, guys. So we're cleaning everything. Double, we're going to double check the tightness of these bolts. You see these two are a little bit loose. So if those are a little bit loose, that's going to, uh, that could cause some problems down the road because you need to have your cam put in there. So we're going to go ahead and double check all of these, these four bolts. If you want to, you could probably check these here. But you don't want to start getting to the point where you're going ahead and over tightening things. If you don't have a torque wrench, you don't quite know what the hell you're doing. This was just something that I happened to notice. This was a little bit loose. So we want to make sure that that's nice and tight. Because if these are loose, what will happen, to guys, is this cam is moving with the rocker arms or the valves, everything. You hear, I have been hearing a little bit of clicking noise from this engine. I don't know if this was it, that these bolts were a little bit loose. But they were, so that's what we're doing. So that's what we're doing, guys. Just make sure you keep it all nice and clean and clean everything in the back. The reason you want to clean everything that you can around it, because when you're done, if you don't see anything bad happening and nothing is getting dirty from where you cleaned it, then you know that you solved the job. But if you clean everything and then you still see things that are getting dirty and you see oil dripping, then you know there could be something else. So you want to keep it in. But if you don't clean it again, then how would you know if anything else is happening because you didn't clean it, so therefore you don't get to see the new stuff, so you would never know. So always best to clean it as a point of reference as well as making sure that it's all going to be nice and clean when you put the gasket on here. And then down here, guys, this is going to be the one that's going to take me a little bit of time here because I'm going to have to pull this gasket out of here. And we're going to want to see it about possibly replacing these grommets too because they did give me new grommets here. So we're going to see about pulling these screws out of here. And obviously, there we go, guys. But this is the old gasket. So this is the old gasket, guys. And this is the part that was broken. So this is why it started leaking because it started leaking through the crack. And you can even see right there, that line right there, see? That was where the crack was, so it was leaking right through there. And as soon as we picked it up, another crack happened. And this is towards the back of the engine. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get all this gunk and crap out of here. Since we're, since we're cleaning it up, you might as well do it. And that's another reason why I do my own repairs, guys. If I bring this to a mechanic, I don't know that he's going to clean any of this crap out of here. But I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to make it as best as I possibly can. Because you can go to a mechanic, they're on shop time. They want to get this thing done ASAP so they can get the next car in there. So they might not do this type of stuff. But since this is my car, I can take my time, and we're going to go ahead and clean this up and get this all perfect. And once we get this all cleaned up and perfect, before we put it back on, we'll be back for another video. Thanks. Hey, guys. So, like I explained to you before, we took it apart. We took out the gaskets, and now we're just going ahead and cleaning it. So far, we've only managed to get necessarily have to we've got one out but we're just going to go ahead we're going in and it says we're putting this engine back together guys 160,000 miles worth of gunk and crap i think a regular mechanic would not go through the effort that i'm going through they would not clean this up the way i'm doing it but i'm going to go ahead and clean up all this gunk and all this residue and the less crap that's inside the engine the less dirty oil the more efficient it's going to be and it certainly can't hurt it just takes a little bit of time here so you guys don't have to do this if you do your valve cover, then I'm choosing to do it to clean it up a little bit to make it a little bit better. But again, you don't have to do this. But anyway, that's what we're doing. We're cleaning this up, and we're continue cleaning this. And when we're done, I'm gonna we're gonna come back, and I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna put this gasket in. We're gonna put these gaskets in. We'll have the new grommets in, and then we'll lay it back on the car. Thanks. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So we went ahead and we basically just cleaned everything up in here. Took some towels, took some rags, you know, and we also did actually replace the rubber grommets on these right over here on this part because these were a little more worn out a little easier these other grommets here they're really hard to get out and then you get them out of the bolts and it just really didn't seem like it was really worth the effort especially since that's not where it was leaking right guys so basically we're putting the new gaskets in right and these are this is the gasket <clears throat> section because this is where the valve cover goes on to where the spark plugs are right because then this is where the spark plugs go here and that's the spark plug screw hole so we just putting these in you know you just kind of put them in finger tight right that should be good enough just enough so that way when you because when you put this thing down there's going to be compression going that way so you don't want them to fall out as you're putting the head the valve cover gasket back on so that's that one now so that's the one that goes over here on that bolt and these are just rubber gaskets guys so what happened with the, the original one that came with the car 
was that um, and the car's got 160,000 miles on it. So it just basically dried up and cracked and then went bye bye. And that's why it was leaking. And one thing you'll notice when you put these gaskets on, you, do, you might have to stretch them a little bit just to get, because they have these little, see these little marks right here? So you know that if you got that in there, then you're in the right place there. And this covers this up and that right there. See, like right around the corner, it's a little bit tight, not too bad. And then that might have to tighten that up a little bit over there. So there we go. So put them all in there. Make sure those little notches are in there. This, again, finger tight, just to make sure it's in there. Once you put this on there and you tighten everything up, the compression forces will hold it together. So we got that. So that's the new gaskets, guys. You can go back to the beginning of the video and you can see how it looked when we had the old gasket in there. And this is where it was actually cracked. It had a couple of cracks right here. It dried up and that's where the oil was leaking out. So now we're going to go ahead and see if we can't put this bad bird back on. There we go. So we're pretty much already on. If you can see, it's really it's really that easy just to, for it to fit on place. Now it's just a matter of the bolts. So I'm just going to go ahead here and start hand tightening these on the outside. Just basically get these finger tight and then once they're finger tight you can go through. Technically you should probably have yourself a torque wrench and look up the exact torque for these. I don't have a torque wrench and I know these bolts are not the super thickest things so I just kind of go until I feel it a little being pushing back a little bit and then I just don't do anymore. Because you do over tighten them and they do snap then that will relieve that compressional forces that you have there and then you could possibly spring another leak because our goal at this point guys is to have no leaks right and you can see right inside there guys you see where i put the, the inside right there for the spark plug one you can see that gasket it lines up really nice and everything lines up i mean this is really <clears throat> not a um not a complicated job it's obviously more complicated than changing the spark plugs like i showed you guys a few years ago but it's not so bad now, if I had a power, if I had a power drill, like a nice lithium ion power drill, this would, uh, these would actually be able to go in here even a little bit better. But for some reason, I like to finger tighten each one first before I go ahead and do too much. Because if something's out of whack, and then you have one tightened too much, then you have to go back and re-tighten it again. Same thing, guys. You just tighten these bolts down. Those compressive forces will squeeze the gasket and then once we do this then I just have to hook up this screw right reverse installation put that one in there and we'll take this piece over here that was for the um, engine pull out and technically I wouldn't even have to put that back in there because we're not taking this engine out right again we're using a 10 millimeter long socket and then I have an extension and this is a 3 8 inch drive try this one over here that is the one thing guys right with ratchets sometimes it's just better to do them finger tight until it's Ready to grab. I've been sitting there horsing around with these ratchets all the time. Alright guys, so I'm gonna do these bolts. Alright guys, so we're just finishing tightening up these bolts. The uh, 10, 11 bolts on the outside. I just go back and forth between kind of each one, from one side to the other. You don't want to tighten up one too much right off the bat and then have something kind of like not be seated properly. So that's good. Like I said, I don't have a torque wrench, so I'm not gonna over tighten things but I'm not going to under tighten things either so this is my last go around here just checking things to make sure it's good again guys if you really want to do this professional way 100% grab yourself a torque wrench look at the specs of these things you kind of know when you don't want to go too far with it and then that's that and then we're going to go ahead and do the ones on the inside with the spark plug I'll show you guys how to do that real quick how to put the spark plug ones on I was actually about to put the screws in there, and I'm like, wait a second, I gotta put the spark plugs back. Duh, okay. So that's good. So now what we gotta do is we gotta find spark pluggy type E thingies, right? I'm just gonna come here. And this is getting a little bit tight because this thing is kind of in the way. This is for the air intake. So you see got four cylinders, four plugs, it's kind of easy to tell which one goes where, right guys? One, two, three for the boot. And, uh, and then this is just those little uh, springs right there to hold it. And this is for the intake, so you wanna put this back on. And there's another screw that I have this piece right here and that goes for that. Put that in there, because that's where you're gonna wanna put in the air intake unit. So let's put that there. 
can't tell you this good enough for that. That's all that really matters there. And this one, I didn't even take that one off. So that's good right there. And this will be for that. So now we just got the... Take the screws, right? Goes on there. So the coil right now was on top of the spark plug. And then you're going to put the... Um, that's the coil pack screw here. Again, guys, what I always do is just hand tighten things initially. Because what if you what if you turn this and they turn it too tight and then all of a sudden you realize one of them is off and then you have to go back and it's just a pain. And so this way, and this is this is the way the thing came out of this one. This was the only one that's actually kind of hanging over the top. But that's fine. As long as you don't feel any tension and things messed up, you'll be all fine. So then after this, guys, we just have to hook up the air cleaner and I'll show you guys how to hook that in there too, and then we'll be done. All right, guys, it's got the bolts tightened up, got the uh, coil packs on top of the spark plugs, so we seem to be good. So the last part is to put this wackadoo crazy setup air cleaner. This is where it gets hairy. Get back here. There we go, underneath, the one, and then the other. Actually go into that, and then this piece goes right into the front there. And I gotta get the other one back. I think it is on. I think we are on. And then obviously we got the air intake tube. Oh, and then we gotta put this other piece. Let me see right underneath there. Yeah, that's actually what I want to do before I get this too tightened up. You gotta put that in there. Okay, so this air take tube is here, then we just have to go ahead and get our screwdriver with that. So let me get around here. Right. You guys can see. You can see that. Can you see it over here? You can see the one hose? It's just this one hose that goes in. In right over here. It's another connector from the air intake. Alright guys, this is the this is the hose I wanted to show you guys. See it comes from the intake here and it just goes right over here. This valve, this is basically any kind of recirculated oil, it'll just go blow back, it goes back into here. But I'm gonna need my pliers, so and let me go here. It's basically the final steps here, guys. You're doing all this, you probably already put you've all probably put clips on hoses, right? So we just kind of bring this into where it needs to be. Yeah, it's good right there. Boom, that hold that holds that in place. And then we'll just go down here and intake, and then the last thing I'll do is I'll just screw this on right here. And then we put our oil filler cap back on there. And that actually kind of holds this whole thing in place from that side. So I, at this point, guys, we're good. I'm going to have to just finish this part up here. And then we'll start the car and see if it works. Yay. All right, guys. So we put everything back together, including the air intake temperature sensor right back here. Tighten this up. Everything back together. And check the oil. Oil was good. Three quarters full. Start it up. Engine sounds good. It actually sounds better. There were those two bolts in there that hold the, the cap, the hold that, that, uh, the, the, the caps that hold the uh, camshaft in place on the one over here in the back. They were like literally loose. Like I could spin them with my finger. So as the engine was running before, I would hear it. Right, it goes to the bolts. So we cut, got everything good. So so far so good, guys. I don't see any oil leaks anywhere. There's no oil coming down the back. It's not smoking on top of the manifold like it was before. So uh, I think we're good. So that's how you replace the valve cover gasket on an Ecotec 2.2. Procedure's probably the same on most engines of the double overhead cam variety. Um, just might be a little bit of difference if you're working on a Nissan or a Toyota or something like that. That might have the bolt layout and you know, taking things apart might be a little different. But this, this, this should work with the 2.0, the 2.2, and the 2.4 um, Ecotec GM engines. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in a little bit.